If you go to Facebook and type in Peoria and Eastern Railway, you can see a public group with many photographs. And there are quite a few interesting pictures portraying the old P&E Railroad. Here's a photograph of Pekin, Illinois, and we can see the bridge. Now, I don't know if this is the same bridge that got compromised or damaged in 1984, but we can see the location that ultimately put an end to the Bloomington to Pekin Railroad of the P&E. Now, here's an interesting picture from someone named Richard Fiedler. This is Wayne Town, Indiana, of the P&E. Now, if you went to Wayne Town, you could probably find this location. These old buildings probably still remain, and you could probably stand right where this picture was taken at. This is the P&E passing through Bloomington, Illinois, after a snowstorm in 1939. And the train horns that you're hearing right now as I'm making this video, that's actually on the P&E in Crawfordsville, Indiana. P&E, and it is east of Danville, Illinois, right by the interlocking or junction of the old Milwaukee Road. So I actually know where this location would be at. And I think his picture says this is 1940. Now this is an interesting picture from Doug Knapper. This is the P&E and it crosses over the old abandoned segment west of Oakwood. And if I remember right, this small track went right up towards the old, I think it's a Woodland Junction or over by Rossville. I remember seeing some picture online up by Rossville. There's actually some of the rail still sitting in the ground. And it was used all the way up into the early 80s, and then it was dismantled. But I think it served, uh, I don't know if it's a grain elevator or some kind of industry. I'm not for sure. Now here's a picture from Ned Carlson. Must have been one hell of a snowstorm in 1939. And this is right around the Bloomington Normal, Illinois area. And it looks to me like that is a serious snowstorm. Now this picture actually shocks me. CSX actually took the time out to honor the P&E by putting their logo on one of its CSX engines. And this was taken, I guess, 2006. And as many of you know, from Indianapolis to Crawfordsville, the P&E gets used and receives a lot of train traffic. It averages maybe somewhere around eight major freight trains a day. Now here's a picture from a Harold Crewer, and this is the 1972 in Urbana at the P&E or Penn Central train yard. We can see behind here is a P&E box car. The sign says, not a public road, all persons are warned not to trespass. Now this picture right here is definitely my favorite P&E picture ever. This Adam McHone has a picture, it looks to me like around 1965. This would be New York Central and this is going over the Wabash River in Covington, Indiana. Now, back in the 80s and 90s, me and my friends used to play. We used to hang off of the bottom of this trestle and actually jump down. And then we would climb up and walk all the way through the internal structure of this trestle just for entertainment. And I always wondered how cool it would have been to be like standing on one of these piers when a train passed by or passed over. So if you go to Google and type in like New York Central in 1965, you can see that this engine right here is very similar to this engine, which makes me believe that this picture was taken around 1965. Now I'm sure that some of you P&E fans probably already know that the Hillary train yard is being demolished or has already been demolished, but this Doug Nipper has some interesting pictures of the Hillary train yard. We can see right here they are unbolting and dismantling the rails. 
Looks like this rail has had some serious weight put on it and it is damaged. I remember driving around this area last year, which would have been the summer of 2018. And I'm pretty sure this is where the old Conrail building used to stand. Which, it's not shocking to me that it's being demolished. It was old and it served its time. It does almost feel like a tragedy that Conrail got bought out and split up by NS and CSX because if Conrail had been left alone, there would still be trains running up and down this line. This was posted October of 2018 and this is right outside of Mansfield and we can see piles of ties and piles of rail. And he writes, looks like what isn't worth saving is getting recycled. That looks like a lot of ties and a lot of rails. Now this just looks like a nice colorful picture. This was taken in March of 1988 and it is between Bloomington and Champaign. Adam Denhart posted this from the News Gazette. It says the last train operated by Conrail in Champaign County is seen headed east which would be towards the Hillary train yard and it is the last train passing near Ogden and this is August 20th 1996. Now I don't understand this because Conrail wasn't officially split in half till 1999. So why didn't Conrail still run trains in 97 and in early 98? Now this is definitely a nice looking picture. This is taken from Brian Watt and this is Champaign, Illinois in 1979 which is right around the same time that Conrail was running major freight trains from Indianapolis through Covington to Danville and then shooting them up north towards Chicago. So if this was taken in Champaign, I'm going to go ahead and guess that they are passing over the Canadian National North-South tracks. And here's another interesting post from Brian Watt. And as we can see, they were making money. They were obviously making profit. These are nice long size freight trains. And here's another picture from Brian Watt. Now this is definitely Petersburg. I remember driving under this viaduct or this small trestle and just marveling because it still showed the P&E. The original Peoria and Eastern is still on this tiny bridge in Petersburg, Indiana. This kind of looks like maybe 1979, 1980, and we can see that they actually put down new ballasts around the ties of the old P&E. Now I do really like this guy's comment. This is Matt Smith, and he says they are planning on painting 8905 in Conrail colors. If they want to restore it back to its original colors, P&E would be more appropriate. Instead, let's paint it in abomination colors and he's absolutely right it was actually con rail that destroyed the peoria and eastern railroad in the first place so the last thing that any of us would ever want to see is an old engine restored in con rail color so i definitely like this guy's comment some more interesting pictures i found online this is that extremely long trestle between oakwood and danville that the tracks were removed in 1998. Like some of you watching this video, I got to walk all the way out here years ago just to experience the sheer size and scale of this trestle. Now, someone actually captured a picture of what seems to be a Penn Central engine. I'm going to guess 1974 is when this picture was taken. And it looks to me like the train is actually headed towards the Hillary train yard. So before I end the video, let's take a look one more time at the P&E. And this was 1973 when it was fully intact. And this is what the P&E looks like today. We can see from Claremont to Crawfordsville, it's major train traffic. And then just a few miles in Danville, Illinois gets next to no traffic. Oh, and by the way, they removed the P&E down on Bowman Avenue or Bowman Street in Danville. 
and then from the end of Urbana-Champaign all the way to Mansfield, that's where NS links on. And I guess for a P&E fan, be thankful that there is a solo cup plant or facility at the end of town so that they can actually use the full length of tracks all the way through town. But yes, this is what the P&E looks like today. That's all that remains.